Hey everyone, Emily with Bob's Watches. Today we're talking all about the Rolex Sea Dweller and discussing its history, key features, and important references. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest video content. Rolex's very first dive watch was a Submariner, which debuted in 1953 during a time when scuba diving was still in its infancy. In terms of being a professional level dive watch, the standard Submariner is more than capable of accompanying you on all of your underwater adventures. However, by the mid-1960s, humans were diving deeper and staying down longer, and the new challenges associated with commercial saturation diving soon called for a new type of underwater timepiece. During saturation diving, nitrogen replaces helium in the air mixture that divers breathe because nitrogen can have a narcotic effect when consumed at high pressure. Due to the extreme pressures and the fact that helium molecules are among the smallest in existence, the ambient gas particles would get forced past the watch's gaskets and get trapped inside their cases. During decompression, the trapped helium molecules would expand, creating pressure inside the watch that was strong enough to blow the crystals clear off their cases. The issue was not about creating a watch that could survive the extreme pressures found deep below the surface of the ocean. It was about creating a watch that could safely travel from those great pressures back to the surface without being damaged during decompression. To solve this problem, Rolex created the Sea Dweller, which formally made its appearance to the public in 1967. Rolex already had a very capable dive watch in the Submariner, and so the Sea Dweller simply expanded upon its core design with a few key additions. Like the Submariner, the Rolex Sea Dweller was a dive watch with a black rotating bezel and a case that featured a screw down crown and case back. However, in addition to a date window at 3 o'clock, the Sea Dweller also offered an increased depth rating, and crucially, it also included a helium escape valve fitted to the side of its case at 9 o'clock, essentially serving as a one way purge valve. The Sea Dweller's helium escape assembly automatically activates when the pressure inside reaches a certain level, alleviating the internal pressure before it can damage the watch. The first Rolex Sea Dweller was the Reference 1665, which offered users an increased depth rating of 2,000 feet. Similar to the Submariner watches of the era, the Reference 1665 Sea Dweller was fitted with a bi-directional timing bezel and a domed acrylic crystal. When the Reference 1665 first appeared in 1967, it featured a dial with two lines of red text that read Sea Dweller and Submariner 2000. However, by approximately 1977, Rolex had updated the dial of the Sea Dweller to feature all white text and dropped the Submariner name completely. This style with all white printing would remain in production until Rolex discontinued the reference 1665 in the early 1980s. These early reference 1665 watches with red text are known as double red Sea Dwellers, while those with all white text are often referred to their great white nickname. Many of the original dials with red letters were replaced with the later era style during routine servicing, and as a result of this practice, double red Sea Dweller watches are now considered rare and highly collectible. By the end of the 1970s, the Sea Dweller was due for an update, and Rolex released the reference 16660, which represented a major step forward for the collection. Just like its predecessor, the new model featured a 40mm stainless steel case with a black dial and black rotating bezel. However, while the original model was fitted with an acrylic crystal and offered users a 2000 foot depth rating, the new reference 16660 featured a sapphire crystal, a ratcheting unidirectional bezel, and double the depth rating at 4000 feet. The movement inside the new generation also saw a major update, with the new model receiving the caliber 3035 which introduced a higher frequency and a quick set date. Initially, the reference 16660 was fitted with a matte black dial with painted tritium hour markers, but part of the way through its production, Rolex switched to gloss black dials with white text and applied hour markers outlined in white gold. By the end of the 1980s, the Rolex Sea Dweller was due for another update, and while the previous one represented a major external overhaul, the updates to accompany the new series were primarily all internal. The new reference 16600 largely resembled its 666 predecessor, but the new watch was powered by Rolex's updated caliber 3135 movement. The new Sea Dweller was also constructed out of highly corrosion resistant 904L stainless steel, rather than 316L like the original model. Beyond the updated movement and materials, the new reference 16600 was largely the same as its predecessor, and at a glance, 
you'd be hard pressed to tell these two watches apart. The reference 16600 set the standard for the Sea Dweller for the next 20 years, and it would remain in production until it was finally discontinued in 2009. During that time, the watch underwent only very minor updates. Most notably, the luminescent material on the dial was updated from radioactive tritium to more modern superluminova. When the production of the reference 16600 ended in 2009, Rolex did not immediately replace it with an updated model, but rather discontinued the Sea Dweller entirely. By this point, Rolex was focusing on its recently updated Submariner collection and new deep sea model, and for a number of years, it seemed that the classic Sea Dweller was done for good. However, in 2014, the Sea Dweller returned, and with the new model came a whole list of updates and new features. The new reference 116600 was still 40 millimeters in diameter, still powered by the same caliber 3135 movement, and still offered users a 4,000 foot depth rating, but nearly everything else about it had changed. Just like the rest of Rolex's sports watches, the new reference 116600 featured a super case design with significantly thicker lugs and crown guards. Similarly, it also featured a maxi dial with larger hour markers, blue glowing chromolite for its loom, and a bezel crafted from Cerachrome, Rolex's proprietary ceramic material. While the ceramic bezel on the Submariner only featured individual minute markings for the first 15 minutes, the bezel insert fitted to the new reference 116600 Sea Dweller was fully demarcated for the entire 60 minutes. The bracelet on the new reference 116600 also got a major update, bringing it in line with the rest of Rolex's modern watches, and it now featured completely solid links and a redesigned clasp with the GlideLock extension system. Many collectors were happy to see the Sea Dweller return, but the new model was visually similar to the recently updated Submariner, with the biggest visual differences being its fully demarcated bezel and Cyclops-free crystal. Despite the numerous updates, production of the reference 116600 was incredibly short-lived, and just three short years later, Rolex had already rolled out its replacement. 2017 marked the 50th anniversary of the Sea Dweller, and to celebrate the occasion, Rolex released the reference 126600. With the new model came a larger 43mm case, the new generation caliber 3235 movement, an updated dial with a Sea Dweller name in red letters, and a Cyclops lens was added to the crystal for the very first time. While the depth rating remained the same 4,000 feet as before, the larger case and numerous aesthetic updates made the new reference 126600 Sea Dweller immediately distinguishable from other Rolex dive watches. Two years later, at Basel World 2019, Rolex released the very first two-tone Sea Dweller, the reference 126603. The new steel and gold watch was largely the same as the all-steel reference that had debuted two years prior, but it now featured the luxurious flourish of high-polished 18-karat gold components. To match its yellow-gold accents, the Sea Dweller name also appears in gold letters, rather than in bright red like on its full-steel counterpart. Both the stainless steel reference 126600 and two-tone reference 126603 remain in production to this day, and as of April 2021, they are priced at $11,700 and $16,600 respectively. However, just like virtually all other Rolex sports models, both Sea Dweller watches are difficult to find at retailers and typically trade hands for values in excess of their retail prices on the open market. Despite the fact that the Rolex Sea Dweller is a more capable dive watch than the Submariner, rarely does it receive nearly the same amount of attention. The Submariner is easily one of the most famous watches in the world, and throughout most of the Sea Dweller's history, it has largely been caught in its shadow. However, while the Sea Dweller costs more than the Submariner when purchased at a retail level, on the pre-owned market, these two watches can often be found for similar prices. This makes the Sea Dweller a fantastic and often overlooked alternative for anyone in the market for a Rolex dive watch. Whether you go for a vintage model with an acrylic crystal and aluminum bezel, or a modern reference with a 43mm case and all of Rolex's latest and greatest technologies, you will be getting one of the world's very best professional dive watches and one that is more than capable than accompanying you to the deepest parts of the ocean. Thanks for watching our video on the Rolex Sea Dweller. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest video content.